Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks all of you to join me for this talk. Uh, my name is Valentin Lefebvre. Uh, as you can guess from my accent, I'm working from France. Uh, I put on my email if you want to join me. I have joined the SUSE company two years ago where, as a Linux distribution engineer and a packager. I have joined the team that deal around the boot on initializations on a system. I also Bergoner a maintainer of some packagings in distributions like Bergoner of Linux Palm or AutoTools and other packaging. And um, yes, I was invited to investigate of how build on static init RomFS and the UKI last year. So for the next 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, I will show you the proof of concept to how to secure the init RomFS. <coughs> Uh, before starting, just to specialize, all my tests on work has been done on a system using UFI firmware, uh, using our architecture x86. And uh, so how are we talking about that? First, I want to show a brief uh, reminder of what happened during the boot chain. So when you power up your machine, you will first have your UFI firmware that will make a short initialization of your hardware and environment. It will then hand over control to the uh, Microsoft Sign bootloader shim. I like to call the pre-bootloader. And uh, it includes a database with key uh, called the uh, machine own key that allows to then boot another bootloader, a known and signed bootloader, could be group too, that's what we are actually using on uh, open source distributions, but also uh, can have a systemd boot. Uh, there was a, actually a talk about systemd boot by Ludwig yesterday. And then this bootloader will load a kernel on the initial RAM file system, the initRD or initRAMFS, uh, to do the initial services, and at the, end, at the end mount your root file system. So all the boot chain is secure and signed except the initRAMFS, and for a good reason actually. InitRomFS need to contain, or uh, now it's built locally on your machine to contain just what it's need to contain to boot your machine. So it's really small and the boot time is really short, but therefore it cannot be signed by this vendor and uh, it cannot be secure. That's why we are talking and try to find a way to uh, secure all the boot chain. So the goal would be first to try to build and sign an InitRomFS using uh, from the vendor side, uh, we'll yeah, talk about dedicated initRomFS and some extensions because we will build static initRomFS. And moreover, we'll also try to use the unifar canon mesh that can also secure your distributions. So same the goal would be to build and sign on vendor side. And we are talk we will talking a bit about uh, extensions add-on where the snapshot could be changed. So first, how to secure and sign the init from FS? As I said, we will need to build on the vendor side. So we are going to use our open build service. And um, so, yeah, to, to not have no more regenerations on the installed machine. So init from FS will be built on OBS using packaging management. So we'll uh, create a spec file to do that. And it will be easy to, to sign it uh, from OBS. So uh, first, <laughs> As we build it on vendor side, we will need to create a generic init from FS. No S only, no minimal anymore. So yes, the init from FS will be bigger, but we need to have something that needs to be adapted for the most use cases. That's why we can think also to create dedicated init from FS. It's kind of a generic one, but maybe for more dedicated uh, yeah, use case images uh, that will just contain specific modules, for example, uh, cloud images. Or I will put some example after. Uh, great. So now how can we build a static init from FS? What kind of tools can we use? So we already know that, but we have Dracut. Uh, Dracut we already use on SUSE uh, images because it's the tool that actually run on your machine to build the local init from FS. Basically it uses shell script. And the uh, particularity is it builds the init from FS where, with what is available on the machine. It means with what is available where the command is run. 
From the command, we can adjust and uh, dedicate the creations of the generation of the init RAMFS using some modules to install. So what I'm using is just a conf argument to have five configurations to put a list of modules I want to install on it to create dedicated init RAMFS. But we have also good arguments. It's no also need that allow on tail records to create an, an, an initiative that that not depend on what it installs on your machine. Of course, you will be to install uh, all dependencies, but it, it will try to create a more generic, generic one. That's what I will use on my spec file when I would create my packages to create the generic init from FS. Uh, I need also to talk about another tool that can uh, create an initiative. It's uh, MKOZ. MKOZ, it's a tool developed by Systemd, uh, written in Python where drag codes use modules to dedicate on initRomFS, where it includes some, uh, have some specific files to install. MKOZ will use the packaging management used on the package level, so you will need to provide a list of packages that you want to install into your initRomFS. Therefore, by default, it's important to notice that it will need internet connections uh, by default to, to, to run. But we can also bypass with a workaround if you create a local repository on your local machine and then link the command to a local mirror repository. It's important because my goal would be to create uh, a packaging on OBS where during the build time, you don't have access to internet. So I compare, compare these two tools uh, creating uh, on OBS. On the one hand, I have drag code, so it's already used. Uh, we know the command. and um, it's, yeah, we adapt it for OBS. Uh, I just need to put some build requires, everything needed, and I can directly create an interface in spec file. On the other hand, I have MQZ where it's not really adapted to OBS due to the need access to internet. But it works on package level, so the need will be more predictable. But a negative point is it will be a bit bigger, with bigger size. Uh, I didn't mention, but with a command, you can finalize the creation of init RAMFS to filter what file will be installed because uh, you don't need to have manuals or documentation in, uh, be installed on your uh, init RAMFS. And uh, yeah, so for these reasons, I prefer to keep using Dracut for the project to build my static init RAMFS. But keep in mind that we can also use MKOZ. Uh, and I know that there is a lot of work around these tools nowadays. So, perfect, so that was a terrific part. Now, practically, how can we build this one on OBS? As I said, so I will use Dracut. And for things, um, so it's a bit specific for packaging, but with my spec file, I will try to create some sub packages. One will be to create my generic init from FS. One would be to create a basic in HMFS where I try to include as minimal modules as possible, but could be not worked for all use cases. And uh, an example of dedicated one. So with just one spec file, I can create the three kind of uh, in HMFS that I will filter by dependencies on my uh, spec file also. Uh, then I just need to call the Dracut command uh, like I described just before in my build uh, time, build sections. And yeah, uh, with that, I already have uh, a project that can install a static generic in InstraMFS through uh, the packaging management. So it provides a list of RPMs that you can install on your machine. So that's good. Uh, yeah, I, so I did the same thing with MKOZ just to compare a bit of, about size of your in InstraMFS. If you look on yours, on your machine, it will be approximately around 20 megabytes or 30 megabytes. With my generic one, yeah, it's bigger. It's three times uh, the local in it from FS. It's quite bigger, but for, I mean, for special use case where you don't have memory limits on a ESP partition, I think it's quite acceptable to use the size. And just a sign out with a MQZ. Yeah, I, uh, I created a bigger in it from FS, but it's due to, I didn't filter all files and, uh, I need to work on the kernel packages because if I want to install my kernel driver into my uh, init from FS, it, I will need to provide the package kernel that will install my kernel inside it. So I removed it, but maybe uh, there is some uh, 
some uh, update or better way to do with MKOZ. But it's just to have an idea of the size of any transfers that you can have with this both tool. And uh, OK, so now that's great. We have a static init from FS. Now the good, re the, uh, good part is how can we sign the init from FS? What I will use is the um, signing features on the OBS directly. So we call that uh, needs SSL cert for this. So on your spec file, you need to provide this argument on the top of your spec file that will tell uh, OBS that we will use a signing process. It will use a PE sign uh, binary. Uh, OBS will provide me into the source directory the certificates that I will uh, take them and uh, to provide in a file installation that uh, when you install your initrefs you will be able to enroll the key that has, the certificate that has been used to sign the initrefs and to tell OBS which file need to be signed we are using the BRP P sign files macro. Unfortunately, it's not as easy. Because there are features on OBS can only sign binaries file on our init from FS, it's a CPO archive. So I cannot do just like that. What we need to do is to transform the init from FS to a binary to wrap it. And also when I would provide to my bootloader, for example, Grub2, I need to tell uh, uh, Grub2 need to, to know that the init strategy is not signed on is a binary format. I have um, a colleague, Michael Chang, that provide me patches on Grub2. That's hollow. Uh, first, it will provide me a group to wrapper, a tool that, in fact, wrap my init from FS into a binary. Then I will be able to use the OBS feature to sign this binary. And this patch also uh, add a command to grab uh, functions to unwrap the init ID and check the signatures. So that's great. With these patches, uh, I have everything that I need to create signed static init transfer through OBS and be able to install on the machine. Uh, yeah, so here is a link to my OBS project where I build everything, everything, sorry. And yeah, if you install the packaging through Zipper, you have these both files that will be installed. Good. There are questions that we can ask. Okay, we have a big um, static init from FS. Uh, we can think to have some extensions, maybe to have a smaller init from FS and then specialize uh, it with uh, extensions. So yeah, that's the idea to give the possibility to specialize dynamically the init from FS. Advantage, we cannot create a usually for dedicated init from FS through OBS, but more extensions that we will install. Of course, extension are binary field, binary binary files that need to be signed uh, in the same way on OBS. And also it will give you a lightweight update because instead of update just your, all your uh, init from FS, you will need just update some extensions. So we can think to use systemd sys extensions and can do that, uh, that hollow extend system or init from FS. Unfortunately for now, I we don't have a way to uh, load this extension into the init RFS from the bootloader. So maybe some work need to be done. It could be another project. Or what we can think is to have a piece of code, like a stub, that hollow loading this extension on that, what it is done into the Unifor kernel image. And that allow me to jump to my second part. Another way to secure the init RFS is the Unifor kernel image. So what is these things? Uh, UKI is an all-in-one UFI binary that will contain everything uh, you need to have to boot after the bootloader. It will contain um, stub sections that will act as, like a bootloader. In fact, with that, you can avoid using grub2 or sdboot. You can maybe directly, after a shim, to boot directly on the UKI. But that will not be how we'll try to use UKI with a bootloader before. It will also cons um, include uh, the kernel, the kernel module, the init transfers, the kernel command line, so everything uh, with uh, further resources. So it's centralized the build because the init transfers will be also static and need to be included in the UKI. So that's why just after uh, my uh, talk on the static init transfers, we will use this. And everything will be signed in the same time. At the end, we, that's a good point, is we will sign the entire file, not each component. So the distributions that you that become more robust 
and more secure. Uh, with UKI, we need to talk about some mechanisms, some automatic uh, mechanism. The first one that I want to show you, it's a discoverable partition specifications. Why we are talking about that? Because if I come back, uh, the kernel command line is embedded into the UKI. So if you sign your UKI, you will not be able to uh, easily change it. And one uh, bigger problem is when you, uh, actually when you provide where is installed your root file system, you need to, you need to provide the root argument and provide the UUID where to find your root file system. You, can, you, can, you cannot do that with, anymore with UK, but there is a mechanism that automatically discover Linux partitions. And it's done by the tool systemd GPT auto generator, uh, executing what there is no root option in the command line, and it's executing during the init RD time. <coughs> so that's uh, great. Another mechanism, it's why I'm talking about that, but system extensions. They also have a mechanism to discover automatically extensions that will be loaded into your init interface. First, you will have the stub section of your UKI that will find uh, extensions that has been pushed uh, following the UKI name. They, uh, it will verify the signature, of course, and put them into the init early side. Then you will have system disease extensions that has, will be run to load extension to extend your init from FS. The last point I want to uh, tell right now, it's uh, another aspect to uh, some companion files that we call add-ons. Similar to extensions, the stub uh, allowed to uh, provide a way to discover add-ons as for extensions so automatically. And add-ons are made to extend dynamically the kernel command line or uh, device tribal. But important thing is we can have a, an example to or a tool, I mean companion device to dynamically uh, update your kernel command line. Good. Same things are that's theory. No, in practice, how, how do you build the UKI? You can reuse Dracut. Yes, uh, it Dracut provide argument to directly transform your init from FS into a binary, to a verified binary that will uh, be as for, it would be an UKI. So thanks to these both arguments. The, the fact is, it will create my static init from FS and then transform uh, it into the UKI. There, is not, there are not a lot of features around UKI with Dracut and my goal would be more to have one project that builds a static init from FS and one project to be the UK that will depend of my uh, static init from FS. So that's why we are another tool, also developed by SystemD, of right and impedance, that we call the UKFI. UKFI is made to create UKI. It will take in arguments a pre-built init from FS, a pre-built kernel, and some together to create a UKI. There is a lot of features now around uh, the UKI with UKFI. It provided, it was implemented, I think, from systemd version 253 and with new features in 54. And at SUSA, we provide it through the systemd experimental packages. So here's just an example of how we can use uh, the, the command. Uh, so yeah, that is my plan. I already have my initially directed project on OBS. What I'm going to do now, I will provide an RPM that will provide the initRD unsigned because I don't need to have a, a sign in it from FS when I will create my UKI. And I have a second project, the UKI project, that will be independent of initRD and that will create the UKI uh, RPM that will provide me in the same way for the initRD from FS, a UKI through the packaging management. So, uh, about the signatures, yeah, we, UKFI, have the possibility to sign your UKI if you provide which tools to use, so it could be PE sign or SB sign. But I prefer keeping using same way so the, my OBS features, uh, the OBS features. So same things uh, on my spec file in UKI project, I reuse NISA certs for build, I get my certificate, I use a macro, and this time UKI it's binary, so I cannot need to have patches to, to sign it and directly sign uh, uh, like that. And uh, yes, so I provide all of these works in the same project as before, so in my uh, Unify home project, and the package called the UKI. 
I also provide some post installation script to speed up the test. Uh, for things, yeah, I need to change the file uh, system version type just to, it's a requirement for uh, the automatic discovering tools that may be too specific. And um, also, it will install automatically a boot entry to your bootloader that you are choose, grab to or SD boot, it depends on what is installed on your machine. So I would directly to, so goal is to install the package and you have directly the possibility to boot on it. And uh, yeah, so that is a RPM that you would get from uh, the package. <clears throat> okay. Now, I came back to the questions that I already asked. Can we extend the init from FS? And if you follow what I said, yes, now we can extend the init from FS. We can create extension. So just first, some explanation of how extension work, works. Uh, extensions allow you to extend user or OPT directory hierarchies with additional, additional files that has been added like an overlay FS on your system or system could be an uh, initiality. That is system DCS extension that will be used to uh, do the job. Uh, extension could be in three kind of formats, uh, plain directories, uh, I use that be, uh, at the beginning to test it, and then some disk images. Uh, I will not go deeply in detail, but there are uh, a specification in the UAPI group that I follow to create uh, how to create ex extensions. Just need to have a specific uh, release files in included into the extension to be sure that we are in a correct extension file, and a partition need to have a specific UUID. And uh, okay, that's for extension in the system. Now, for booting, when you provide the extension in a boot uh, time, you will need to provide them into the boot partition, in the ESP partitions. How it works, the step will look on the files name of your UKI. If I have foo.ufi UKI, it will then uh, check if there is a folder, an extra folder, dot extra dot D, and all files with the dot row extensions would be taken as an extension. And then it will verify them to provide them into the initial environment where um, System DC extension will get this extension and extend your init RAM FS. So it is how it works. Yeah, system DC extension will load them after that. Uh, great. Now, how practically we create extensions? How can we build that? We can reuse the MQZ command again. I have tested it last year and uh, yeah, I wasn't really sure. Yes, I found the procedure a bit tedious. Uh, maybe it has changed now, but uh, I get some size of my extension that was not really optimized. So I decided to use a shell script to create extensions, following also specifications that you can find to the UAPI group. My goal, yeah, first thing to, um, will be to, uh, as MKOZ worked, uh, you provide the name of a package that you want to include into your init FS. I get all dependency files. I remove all files that are already installed in the UKI. To them, uh, create the corresponding release files and create uh, raw disk images. So I use this script to create an example of a package, the UKI extension SRS. Again, it will be uh, provided in my Unify project if you want to check. Uh, thing is, yeah, it will create extension in build and reuse the OBS feature to sign it and provide it through a packaging uh, again. I also a post installation script as for UKI to directly provide the good directory of um, the a corresponding UKI. And I just just for, for now it's just a push on concept. It's still in develop project and work in progress. And um, yeah, so that, that's the RPM that uh, provided the package. Great. Now, another good topic is what about snapshots? I talk about snapshot because uh, we, we use BTR first file system, so we have the possibilities for snapshot, but with UKI, there are some difficulties to use them. But before talking about difficulty, what is a snapshot? Just a short, brief uh, explanation. Snapshot is the volume of your BTR first file system that mainly allows system recovery. Uh, at SUSA, we use the snapper tool that creates snapshots. Uh, there are plugins with a zipper that 
each time you zipper install or package or do an update, it would create a snapshot into the root directory, uh, root.snapshot with an ID, it's a, like directory is the ID of the snapshot that will be incremented. To boot in a specific snapshot, you will need to provide uh, the you will need to update your kernel command line. For now, it's only the options to, to use snapshots. You will need to provide the root flags option to link to a specific snapshot. Now, if you don't have a root file, it's just to boot on the la latest on your actual root fi fi file system. But uh, yesterday, um, Ludwig talked talk well about snapshots, so I will not go in detail now. But here, yeah, there is a problem with my OKI. <laughs> the kernel command line is embedded, so I cannot add a uh, the root flag emissions. That's why we are using add-ons, or mainly why your add-ons has been created. So what is add-ons? Add-ons are raw image, in, raw image, raw binary, that uh, made to extend dynamically the kernel command line, as I've described. As for extension, they need to be provided in a specific directory. So you have two kind of add-ons, global ones that can be uh, used to if you have multiple UKI installed, you need to provide into these files uh, directory paths to have a global add-ons. And a UKI dedicated, I mean, uh, add-on for a specific UKI, it will put on the extra directory. So the step will take all files that have extension in a, I mean, that finish by dot addons dot UFI to load them into their init from FS. Uh, yeah, so the goal would be to uh, create one add-on plus snapshot that I have. I will try to create one bootloader entry following the bootloader specifications. One bootloader entry will uh, allow me to load a specific UKI. It could be the same UKI for multiple uh, bootloader entry, but each one will contain one add-on that add-on contains the root flag according to the snapshot it has been linked. But yeah, we have some problem with that, uh, with this way to, to work. Because first, um, the way of how add-ons are implemented with UKI is UKI will search all add-ons from directory. I, I don't have options to choose which add-ons to load, so it will load everything. So we will get a command with a lot of root flag options that we don't want that. Also. For this project, I want to have a sign UKI. So it has, uh, the UKI will be built on the OBS. So I have to know in advance how many snapshots it will have. But I cannot guess how many, which will be the ID of the snapshot because it will be incremented in runtime. But I have some solutions. I mean, I, I don't personally have solutions, but there is a work in progress on a pull request on the systemd side that allow to create a third type of add-ons. It's uh, called the uh, UFI add-ons, where you, and it add a new keyword into your bootloader to allow you to choose which add-ons to load. For now, it's still in working progress, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was needed to provide some fix and patches to have everything works together. I backport to my OBS project to have a systemd patch. And um, yeah, I finally have some things that worked. On, on, for example, if my entry for a specific UK, I can choose which add-ons to hold. So these add-ons uh, need to be placed not in the uh, directory that I showed you just before. Uh, it needs to be placed uh, somewhere else. Otherwise, the step will take all add-ons from the global directory or extra directory. Now they have to be uh, given um, in other directory of uh, your boot partitions. So that fix one of my problems. The second one, uh, yeah, nowadays there are no options to uh, to guess a snapshot ID. So what I have think, so just propositions. When I boot on my machines, uh, I don't need to have 30, 50 entry options. Uh, basically, I want to try to boot on a, a specific number of latest snapshots. So what I have thought is to create, I know that's not a, for now a good uh, method, but a uh, known name of symbol link link, where I will cyclically, for each time that a snapshot is created, 
For example, I will have my three symbolic uh, links that will link to my last three uh, snapshot directory. In that way, I can know in advance uh, the name of the snapshot, so I can in advance create the root flag options. So I've tried to do that, uh, creating a snapper plugins. Uh, so this work will be found in my own unified project, I call the UKI snapshot, that will install uh, all add-ons created via, via UKI. Yeah, I didn't um, uh, show you that, but add-ons image can be created by Ukify, so I use that. I create like 20 add-ons that I then provide into my file system. It then allow them to the boot partition. And um, I also add the snapper plugin that will cyclically uh, move all my 20 symbol link link to the last 20 snapshots. So it's still in work in progress, uh, to be honest. I, I finished to work <laughs> yesterday on that. So but just a proposition of of how we can use a snapshot, because my goal, yeah, will be to have a proof of concept to have a sign UKI that can be worked with a snapshot. It's my last point that I want to show you. Uh, so yeah, I, I provided a lot of way to work on the UKI, so a bit uh, like easy boot util. I create a tool in, in a shell script that allows you to do a lot of a work using UKI, so I provide in my GitHub account. So I also provide a lot of the documentations on this uh, pro uh, on my uh, on my project. So if you want to follow uh, investigations on uh, what I, of what I have talked about this uh, uh, presentation, I will provide all documentation there. I also provide packages to install in your distributions. So what you can do is uh, my UKIT, the Unifor can image tool. It has some verbs to create UKI, to create formatted extensions, to create add-ons, snapshots, and add automatically bootloader entry to Grub or SDBoot. For SDBoot, I try to use SDBoot utils. Uh, I'm still um, uh, I'm still working to implement the UKI process on SDBoot uh, util, but due to the fact that we cannot use snapshot yet, uh, um, I cannot have all features with a SD boot util, but otherwise, yeah, I use Ukify to create UKI, uh, Grub2 commands to create an uh, entry for Grub2, etc. Okay, so there is a lot of subject on the UKI, so conclusions. What has been done? We are now a potential project that can build a static sign in it uh, RAMFF through OBS. Uh, same thing for the Unifor Canal image. I provided our uh, obvious project with a sign one. Uh, we can install everything via packaging and automatically add boot entry. Uh, I also provide package to provide extension that can be signed. Same thing for add-ons for snapshots. And um, I didn't explain here, but I also created an image that is based on Ion. I use macros on the OBS using Kiwi features to uh, create an image that uses SDBoot as a bootloader and have already the UKI installed with all the uh, uh, key already enrolled. Uh, where it's, yeah, the only way to boot is to use a UKI, it's just to have a, an image, a virtual image to test it. What now needs to be done? What we need to do again? So, <clears throat> yeah, what I have planned is, to push all the UKI package on my UKI2 to factory, maybe to have them uh, accessible to, to get them into uh, Tumbleweed, for an example of that. Also, we still need to investigate on the Grub2 side because uh, when I show you about extensions and the UKI, it works well with SDBoot, but for now, uh, it missed some uh, part of uh, Grub2, so we need to, to continue to, to work on that especially uh, to mapping uh, keyword for the bootloader specifications, and also to load extension, and also to, to find a way to like the extensions if you just want to use initRomFS alone without using the UKI. And uh, also, yeah, I, I will keep following uh, the investigations using add-ons for snapshots. Okay, so I just give you again some useful link to to this project. First one's my OBS project, and I have a link for the Ion image that I have built. Don't look about the build result for it's in red. I have to fix some uh, some part, but it's already it has been built before. And uh, yeah, link about my UKI tool. Great, thank you. 
Um, is there any questions or comments about this proof of concept? Or yeah, I'm listening. If there is uh, other things, we have there yeah, ten minutes. Ten minutes left. Hi, it's working. Yeah, okay, thanks. A uh, great talk. Uh, thanks. Uh, I am wondering about the particular use case about the uh, uh, network boot. If you have UFI Pixie, for example, you can have only one file which DHCP points you to download. So you have one UKI UFI. Is it possible to download add-ons or extensions used like on demand during from the UKI? From the UKI. Um... It will be companion files from the UK. I didn't look on the PXC uh, way, so it could be uh, another subject to, to look. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> thanks for your question. Do you have a size comparison between the static init arm arm of S which you're using for UTI and the normal one? Yeah, I uh, provided on a previous side. Like um if I came back to the init from FS uh, port, uh, I'll give you an example of the size of uh, generic init from FS and the one with, uh, for example, the local one. In fact, the, my UKI will use, uh, yeah, perfect, this one. So. My, my UKI, my project will use a generic one with a size of 72 megabytes. This uh, yeah. data has been done last year, just to mention, because I work on that last year. Maybe it's, now it can be switched Great, out. Generic. Basic is that how much we're doing, uh, that's the default version. Yeah, close to the, I mean, basics where I try to reduce some modules that personally I don't have needed. Just have some example, of, but. Yeah, yeah, no, but this is not the point because you're trying mm. you, to build a generic in yeah. drum of so it's not the point removing modules because that's why you, pop it, why you have a static one, right? Yeah, right. So, um, now the main reason why we used host only for Dragit and SUSE is precisely to reduce the size mm -hmm. because the inner drum of S have to be loaded via BIOS means i.e. you have to use whatever the bias provides to mm -hmm. load the inner drum FS into memory. And that is slow, yeah. slow <laughs> as hell. And that was the prime reason why we did it, because otherwise you'd be spending ages trying to load that thing into memory. Of course. And um, the other one is that, um, coming back to the network thing, um, I don't really think it's feasible to put the network boot in there in a static in RamFS or in UKI because the network setup is far too complex. Plus, you might have several modules you would need to be aware. Yeah. Like, do you only have simple networking? Do you have VLANs? Do you have trunking? Do you have something? All of these things would need to be packaged in there and that would then just blow up the entire thing, um, making it completely unwieldy. So. I'm not sure. I mean, we've, we've tried to build a static inner drum MFS several times in the past, and, but eventually always came back to, to say, oh, no, don't bother, because it was impossible to make all use cases work. So we always mm -hmm. had to restrict the static inner drum RAM MFS to specific use cases, thereby already having to maintain two separate code paths, the static one and the generic one, and then eventually decide, oh, come on, you know what? It, Simply not worth it. Just kick the static one. Always go for go for the um, for the um, um, tailored one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for for your remark. But yes, that will really depend on your specific use case if you you want. Yeah, maybe my network was not a correct example for a dedicated. Just wanted to provide dedicated. And just about the basic one. Yeah, I would just want to try to provide a basic one because uh, I have in my head to work after with extension files to add other modules to try using extensions. It needs to be signed yes at the end. Mm -hmm. And then you will have a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, it could, could be hard to. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> could be done. So I'm a bit confused as uh, where you get the certificate for signing all this. Uh, Is it a static thing? And what about um, a solutions where the device, the storage device, for example, gives you certificates and you want to sign for that particular setup, so meaning that particular set of devices. Is that possible with this solution? 
Yeah, I think, but here I, I'm, GM. <laughs> I'm just using certificates provided by OBS. Uh, I take the easy way because OBS did all the work for me. So I'm using But in, in fact, you can also then provide another way to, um, from the vendor side to, to provide your certificates and use the well, P-Sign uh, tool. When you say sign. vendor, who is it? Is the I'm a vendor. One, one who provides distributions. Images okay. directly. So you're not specializing through the signing to that particular machine, that particular hardware setup. No. What if I want to do that? Because I don't want someone to copy, for example, the the, the snapshot from that drive to another drive mm -hmm. to boot uh, another machine. Yep. If your certificate <laughs> is the same for all your distros or your installs, mm. that would be possible. But I think you, you can then sign on your own. I'm not sure if it's, uh, it will answer your question, but you can also well, use tools. My question that, is, is it possible? Yeah, that, can, can, course, can that be done with this, this workflow uh, for installing the images? Uh, if you, I mean, other possible options, yeah, you, you, you will be to create your own UKI and your, your own tool like PSign. Uh, I talk about UKI the tools that can directly create your UKI with the sign process when you provide your own certificate, but therefore you will not choose the one provided by the OBS, for example. My project is to recreate uh, this from OBS so you really get the UKI. So, but if you want to, you can also create the UKI well, the, from the OBS. The OBS part of the, the, the verification can always be integrated within TCG, TCG DICE where you have a, a certificate chain and it can be somewhere checked along the way. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about uh, um, a generic thing that can be checked, uh, that checks out on any machine where, but you do not want that to happen. You want really to have your installs uh, not move across machine easily for an added layer of security. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the question and something to think about, I think. Yeah, that's something to think about. Yeah, thanks, Martin. So what is the easiest way to uh, change a kernel boot parameter? Is it only through add-on? Say, suppose if I want to remove some parameters, say quiet or something of that sort, what would be the easiest way to do that? Clearly, it's to use add-ons. I present add-ons to the snapshot uh, features, but also you can use add-ons to provide any kind of argument you want to your kernel command line. What if I have to remove something from oh. the existing one? Uh, I don't think that's possible for now to remove some things. So you need to have like first, uh, so including your UK, a really short command line, and then you can have some add-ons. Add-ons are UFI binaries that you can include a dot in the last section when you can add a new option, but you cannot remove the, uh, the option already made yeah, before. So in, in that case, do I have to rebuild the UKI all over again if I have to remove something? Yeah, but I think the goal of the UK to provide the minimal root file. So the best way to do it is to create the UK with not a CMD line and then, then use add-ons to populate your, your UK. And then you push on add-ons. I don't know if you, this time you want to have this argument and this argument, you just take these add-ons to put on the boot partition. It will be, I think, the easiest way when you first provide the UK with no kernel boot or I mean the default one. But yeah. Thanks. Um, so what's about uh, the NVIDIA driver? Then you have to rebuild your UKI locally, or? Huh? Yeah, I think we need to uh, create a dedicated in from FS for NVIDIA. I think that includes NVIDIA driver. So maybe it could be an example of a dedicated in from FS, but maybe for this kind of project, also um, don't use add-ons, but use extensions that can be extend your from FS and then add NVIDIA driver maybe. It could be done, yes, like that. I think it will be a perfect use case for extensions, for okay. example. Thank you. Is there any questions? I think we are at the end. So thank you, everyone, for your attentions. And I hope that I give you enough information about your question. <laughs>